Right, well, welcome back to episode four of our Paperbird Home Club. And here today we have Mike Speechley, who is one of our local amazing authors and illustrators that we have in Fremantle. Would you call Fremantle home? Or you got a lot of places that you call home? I do. It was home. Yeah, it was home a few years ago. I was living uh, in North Fremantle. So I loved it. Except for when the smelly sheep boats came <laughs> and the sea breeze blew in, blew straight into North Fremantle. But it was good. I loved the place. Well, welcome back to Paper Bird because Mike's a bit of a regular down here and he's a frequenter of cafes. And we were just talking before about how, with the cafes closed, how do we how do we work when we're used to drawing in cafes? It's almost impossible to work at home for me. Home feels like a bit of a cave at the moment, but everyone's in the same boat, and so we're going to have to find ways of doing it. So I spoke to you, Jen, about perhaps moving my desk next to the window. Yeah, so I reckon I've got that's all great. The light coming in, so I've yeah. got ideas. Got ideas. Yeah, we're all in the same boat. So um, I'm sure there's lots of kids watching who are yeah working from home now and looking for ways to get creative. So. We will see what you guys, what, what you're working on now, and what you have worked on. And maybe you could start with telling us a bit about where you started in your in your career as a writer and illustrator. I think this is where I started. Oh, look at that! Yeah, I'll hold that out. But this is my very first sketch pad, and cars, cars is on it. I was learning how to do uh, running writing, <laughs> so I was in about year like two cats, or three. Yeah. yeah, it looks a bit like cats, and. I have my very first drawings in this sketch pad. So we've got a Jeep, which is, funnily enough, the car that I drive now. Amazing. A police motorbike, a Holden, which doesn't exist in Australia. We have an old-fashioned old fashioned car. I quite like my hand lettering. It's a Helvetica. But then I've moved on to my running riding, the Cursive, and that was our family car, an orange Datsun 180B. So in the back seat there, I spent many horrible moments with my brother and my sister. <laughs> it was awful. And I was, my poor sister, she was in the middle and um, with two older brothers and I still feel for her. I moved on to planes and things like that and we've got different things here. There's a Qantas plane, not many of those flying at the moment. And then we've got Cherokees and... This is supposed to say Wellington. For some reason, I thought it meant Wallington. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> we've got Concord. a Concord, which doesn't work anymore. Oh. Then I've got birds. I really love this Kingfisher drawing. And I've got a mallard, a, some swans. And then this one here, it's a bit weird. It's, I don't even know what I wrote there. It's, I think it says non, nonsense bird. Oh, yeah. Getting a bit creative there, going cartoon. I went abstract. Abstract. Uh, That's your first abstract drawing. It probably is actually my first abstract drawing after about the age of five. Before five, there was lots of abstract (laughs) drawing. So not intentionally. No, no, not intentionally. And then these are some of my sketch pads that um, I've been working on since. So So you you go for the black standard sketch pad, which is. Um, watercolour paper or just a, a thicker This is just like a paper. thick cartridge paper mm-hmm. and I just do lots of scribbles and like character that. designs and trying That's to work out nice. styles and I, I bought this one in America in San Francisco so that's where Matty lived in you I was in Seattle Oh Seattle uh, San oh, beautiful. Not, far, not too far away Not too far and here's some very early sketches for the Orange 430 as well. But yeah, we've got Maddie Mitchell here with us today just helping us out with some of the filming, which is who you heard just then. And we saw Maddie here on Monday. Maddie was the first one of our series. And you guys can find his, um, his video on our YouTube Home Club, Paper Bird Books Home Club channel. And the links are up on our uh, Instagram bio and on our website. Wow, that's cool. Oh, that's a really good one for today, hey? Kids inside looking out the window. (laughs) It's a great one for today. I came up with that idea when I was in New York and um, 
and I was staying in a little apartment in New York near Central Park and I thought of an idea about a Bigfoot that lived in Central Park and so I actually went and visited a school in New York and the kids go, oh we've got an idea for your title of your possible book called um, The Bigfoot in the Big Apple and I went, I'm going to steal that, that sounds like a brilliant idea so... <laughs> I, um, I don't think you stole it. I think they were giving it to you. Yeah, it's, it's a all gift. Good. It's oh, a that's gift. nice. And there's more just thinking and pattern um, characters. There's some of the Bigfoot characters. This is an old lady he thinks was a Bigfoot. It's actually just an old lady with a coat. Yes. And um, she's ended up, I think she ended up being the old lady in the Orange 430, the shop yeah. assistant. That's a basketballer with, strangely enough, very big feet. Are you getting the drift? And here's a little lady who likes to feed the birds. Looks oh, a bit like in Mary Poppins. Yeah, yeah, she lives in a park. Sort of stereotypical characters there, and there's a city. Mm. Big city. And um, yeah, we, and it's got an interesting quirk. So every ending. page doesn't have to be a masterpiece, that's the thing, isn't it? Oh, messy. Yeah, messy is good oh. for, for sketchbooks yeah like these are some of the very first ideas for the cover actually for the orange 430 so um and there's some sketches that i did that have ended up turning into other sketches which have ended up being at the back of the book oh yeah there's a very early drawing of the orange 430 as well so just trying to work it out here's some more so so there's some really rough ideas here and that that drawing there ends up looking like this in the book which oh God, yeah, the detail. Woo. yeah and then I, I sat in a restaurant for a couple of days and how cool is that guy so you could do some of these really complex drawings at home i know my little boy who's eight he has a you know when you've got a brand new sketchbook to start a visual diary of Home time, home, and um, and it's a bit scary like at the start, isn't it? When you've got a a new a new pad to be working on, it doesn't have to be good. It can be rubbish. Most of my early stuff is absolute rubbish, and I don't even like. There's whole pile of things that it's just my brain coming out on the page. I know what's going on. No one else would, but you know, I've, I've got books and books of this. This dribble stuff. Which and you're very just, generous in showing us, but most people, you know, they think, well, this is for me, this, these books are for me, and they don't have to be um, perfect. And they're just development books, aren't they? Developing ideas. Yeah, like... But it's so well, great to get an insight into people's minds and the creative process. Yeah. But this is the fun bit, because there is no real pressure to make sure. The hard bit's when you're trying to make it exactly the same on every page and make sure the character looks the same but you, a lot of these things end up being in there and sometimes I repeat the drawings or, or I do it without even realising oh, I bet you've done a rep repetitive drawing yeah, yeah there's been a question on Instagram about how many sketches do you think you have or well, how many sketchbooks do you think you have I've, uh, I've got about a dozen I reckon mm. of these and uh, it's a very good question but I just keep going and then I store them and then every now and then I try and grab them again and um, I pick them up and um, yeah, have a look through them and then I think, oh well, I didn't use that in that book but I could use it again like if I was going to write a sequel or something like that. Uh, some of the sketches or ideas that I didn't use could come back again. What do you think? That's on her head, guys. Any ideas what people think that is on her head? It's a weird thing. <laughs> do you have any <laughs> ideas for collaborative artwork that we do separately or add to? I'm doing a shared art project with my 10-year-old neighbour. Well, that? how about you both design... I reckon, what about uh, two people designing a character and then they have to um, have those characters meet and what happens when those characters get together? A bit like what Brian is doing with her oh, wonderful yeah. children's book characters, United. Yeah, has anyone seen that? On Bryony's, um, who we had yesterday, 
her Instagram account, if anyone's looking for it, Bryony Stewart Illustration, um, has this really cool project of putting together different illustrators' characters in a kind of a hug or a just like a what do you call it? United characters united. Well, the good thing about it is that we're not supposed to be hugging and things like that with people as much but the characters can do whatever they want yeah and so i love that idea that you can just create this magical world that didn't exist before well, so i've done it again i keep flipping the screen to myself sorry guys <laughs> so these are perhaps some characters that didn't make it into the first book this is um harvey's mate and he gave this thing as a birthday present um so there was a there was a thought that the um, the drawing back there with the girl something on her head might be a thought extractor. A thought extractor. That's okay. I'm going to write that down. That would be a good idea for a book later. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's um. There's lots of different. Yeah, it's sparking up ideas. This is from my current one that I'm playing around with. So trying to get some characters happening and. There's the grandpa character. The first time I, I drew him with a bit of colour. Um, kids on bikes. Um, trying to get some side angles. It's uh, lots of good fun there, actually. There's Fang. And Fang, the dog, actually ended up in this book here. And, um, yeah, it's really fun. It's, I, I'm, I'm actually enjoying this at the moment and looking through these. And my head is just... Like, buzzing with, with new, ideas. New, new thoughts and ideas and it's true and like a bit like this here and this is what my head feels like at the moment all these cogs turning and ideas popping out or, or this electric one here which is like a oh, inside computer yeah on the hat cool so yeah, yeah. Hope, hopefully you've enjoyed having a look at those yeah that's so cool there's some Sometimes I spend a little bit more time on the characters. So who are, who are, the, who are your kind of... Inspira who, who do you draw inspiration from in the arts world? Everywhere. Everywhere. There's the first person that I, I met that wrote books was Sean Tan. Yeah. The very first person. No way. And I was... How I was Well, I was working in a graphic design studio. And um, so my thing that I love doing... And I used to work with Kelly Camby. But I was working in a particular studio and Sean Tan walked in when before, I think right in the very early days. And I remember him saying, oh, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, I'm just doing some work here. And, and, he go, and I said, what about you? And he goes, I write children's books. And I went, huh, never met anyone who's written children's books before. And he showed me some drawings from the rabbits. And no I way. was blown away. I couldn't believe it. And... Um, so I, it must have been in the back of my mind because then I became a school teacher. Uh -huh. And then I still have a love for graphic design and I, st I still really enjoy it, but I think that started my thought process of, you know, maybe I should give this a try and see how I go. And 20 years later, my book came out. So it's, <laughs> it's a long time between. But, um, yeah, it's been a long process. Yeah. yeah it's been fun. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah, well, we've got a bit of a shout out to Kelly Camby, who's um, one of our um, an, another amazing uh, local award-winning author and illustrator who hopefully will get on this show soon. And um, Kelly Camby won the the uh, Premier's Award last year, didn't she? she with did. her book um, Rodney. Rodney. No, it was, was the it? whole. The it the was whole story. The whole it was story. a whole story. Rodney's yeah. her latest one, but yeah, Rodney's been shortlisted, as has um, Mike's new one, The Gift. Um, long list. Oh, notable. Long list. Notable. We're waiting for the shortlist. I'm sure it'll be shortlisted. Mm. Um, and, the, and the orange book was runner up, wasn't it? On a book. On a book. Yeah, so. Yeah, second to Sean Tam, it. didn't he? Yeah, that well, we'll, we'll say second to Sean Tan. Second to Sean Tan. I mean, yeah. you couldn't, you couldn't um, have anyone else that was as more worthy, really. Um, I know. I, I'll last year. Be well, I'll never... He's amazing. He blows me away. And his work is very inspirational. And I just can't believe that someone can think like that and can do that. So it's, and he's so humble, isn't he? It's very nice. Yeah. yeah he's, he wouldn't, 
yeah, you wouldn't think he was doing his thing. He just goes about it quietly, and yeah. uh, I love that. So maybe you could do us a drawing today because we've been putting some of the illustrations up on our website for kids to download and colour in, or um, keep on drawing over and extend and. And we've even had some drawings sent back to us um, from kids that have been drawing at home. Yep. So, I, I'd love to. Well, firstly, I used to be a graphic designer, which is a really good fun job. So can I show you a couple of things yeah. there? We've got two people in the room now, other people, not me, who've got initials that are double, double yeah. letters. So yours is JJ. Mine's JJ. And yours is MM. M&M. And, &M. and that's kind of cool. And I was thinking last night that maybe like drawing your own initials is a really good logo exercise. Yeah. And I haven't thought about this much other than James Foley. So ah. I popped into my head and I thought, wow. So we'll start with James Foley. So with James, we can go a J and an F. And then I'll work out a bit like the ca joining characters together to create a story. Doing this can create a logo. So we've got J and F, and then we can go lowercase J and a lowercase F. And then imagine if I did a combination of those and I went a lowercase J and an uppercase J and an uppercase F, and suddenly we've got this thing that looks like that, that thing that's on the side of violins where we have a kind of logo for James Foley, which is very musical, and I do know that James is very musical. Yeah, he was telling us the other day when he was on this show that he played piano um, or did piano exams up until year 12, so oh, wow. he's a musician as well, yeah. I wish I was. And then, so let's say with you, Jen, we can go J and J, and let's just have a look at what happens when we go lowercase J and lowercase J. And I kind of like the idea of going maybe for this one we can go J and J and it looks like a pie symbol. Oh yeah. Doesn't it? So that's kind of cool. I mean you can play around with that and then maybe put some dots on the top, see if that turns into anything. You can try upper lowercase J with the uppercase J and make symbols up. Looks like a like a Chinese character or a Japanese mm -hmm. character there. And or it looks like a person almost like dancing or. And we've got a, a muso in the in the audience who has um, told us that the that they're called the F holes on violins. Those um, those ones up there. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. And yeah. shout out to um, our friends at Alphabet Soup magazine, um, who are everyone should check out uh, online if you just Google Alphabet Soup magazine or kids magazine and they have they publish um, some um, poems and short stories from kids kids review books and they tell us what are the most amazing books to read at the moment so you guys should check that out I I um, wrote a little interview in Alphabet Soup recently and it was really great and I actually admitted that I do watch people in cafes and I listen to them while I'm drawing and I get all sorts of information about what's going on. <laughs> and then sometimes I incorporate a little bit of that into my book, sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. So mm. al alphabet so you can have a look at that one as well. So here's Maddie Mitchell. And I've got lots of like an M and an M and lowercase M and lowercase M. If you know the Commonwealth Bank logo, have you ever seen that? Uh, when a long time since I've looked at the Commonwealth Bank logo. It's a big long logo, it's a big word, and so what they've done for the middle... I was going to show everyone in the studio, so you might be wondering where these voices are coming from. That's Maddie <laughs> yeah, Mitchell! Yeah. They joined the two M's together. Yeah, that's right. That's and that's right. Yeah, just to shorten it up a little bit. Yeah. And like, that's pretty cool. But when I was a kid, I was obsessed by logos, so the books were all on the bookshelf, like this, at home, and my... Mother was always trying to get me to read them, and she kept on saying, "Why don't you like take them out of the bookshelf and have a look?" But I like the the logos, mm. um, and I was obsessed by the logos on the actual spine of the book. And 
But there's that logo on your carpet down there. Yeah, and we have one of these on our carpet. The Puffin logo. Our Puffin rug. And there's a Penguin logo, and I loved Penguin logo as a kid. Loved it. But we had another book um, on our bookshelf that had this octopus as well. And the octopus is really good. Cool. Uh, See, it says octopus, Mm. and if you count them up, there's actually eight legs. And I thought that was like magic, really. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was in year three, around the same time I was doing this, I I might have seen it somewhere else, and a lot of you have seen my book talks at schools. I always show this. But I think this is where it began. And I might have seen it somewhere. I'm not saying that I designed this, but in my mind, I think I did it. But check this out. So this was based off the octopus logo. It's something I used to draw all the time as a kid. So we got an S, an H, an A, an R, a K, with a big thing like that and I've just written the word shark but it looks like a shark and I think that's amazing that you can do that just with letters and um, and I think that's why I became a logo designer because of all these little things that were around me and I was a bit obsessed by it and I I don't know I spent a lot of time just looking at, at shapes and at images and how you can simplify, create an image of what a company might be, even as a little kid, um, what it feels like to be part of that and of that company. Like I'm looking at the um, yellow bird logo over there, and it's fantastic. I can see it's friendly. It's got bright colours. It's simple line drawings. It looks like a beautiful, friendly place, and I like that. It's friendly, but he's got attitude, hasn't he? <laughs> I've got it there as well. He's it? kind of got purpose. He's got purpose. Uh, yeah, he's he's doing something. He's moving forward. <laughs> he's <laughs> moving forward. That's yeah. what we're doing at the moment, moving forward. <laughs> we're yeah. dealing with each day as it comes. Oh yeah. And then I think that was that was something. And then, you know, even in the Orange 430, there's a lot of things about because I worked in advertising And I loved shapes and words. And a lot of these things here are based off advertising. So there's catalogue, lots of little Mm. tricks in the symbols. There's hidden things all the way through the text. There's like a dollar sign in the light. And so we're trying Mm. trying to give hints that this is about spending your money on useless objects. Things that have no purpose and that you're wasting your money on um, when you could actually save it for something that's that's really good and that's the premise of the story. And in the backgrounds here we've got things like um, advertising signs, half price, buy one, get one free, all the things that you see on television um, to try and get you to buy that. And logos also do that. Logos can... Can try I see that object. You've got it here. Have you got a, like a 3D object of this? I do. My friends made it out of cardboard, which is really good. And they've got some old knobs from a... Um, that's an orange 4P. They said it was almost impossible to make. Yeah, it looks really tricky. Angles, but it's pretty good. This I made a little flap for it here. It's like an extra bonus flap. Cool. Yep. And... Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I've got all the little symbols and the signs on a sticker that I put on there. Mm. And uh, on the dials of mm. the object, this one's this one's come out, so I'll put that back in again. See, it's got an extendable button that mm-hmm. goes in and out, which makes it very special. And, um, yeah, this so this is it. Yeah. So we've got lots of things going on there. And... Lots of the images, are, that's a barcode, that wallpaper is a barcode from a package. Gosh, so much detail. How long did this take? This story, oh, I thought about it 10 years before it came out. And it was a university project where I designed basically that box there. 
and it says useless object in five different languages Ajeto in a tile object in a teal and it's lost this object Ajeto in a teal in and in useless object in English as well and it's basically it was I was just having fun designing something that had no purpose at all and then I realized that we sometimes buy things that are just rubbish and, all the time and then they don't work and then we end up just getting rid of it and yeah. chucking it out and I was driving around my suburb and seeing all these things that people had maybe used once or twice and then they've just thrown it out on the birch collection mm. so we're all guilty of that even yeah. especially me I think so in so, the last couple of minutes can you tell us a bit about what you're working on now I am working on a new idea, which is over there. I'll get it. Maddie's going to get it for you so you can oh, keep, thank you. keep sitting down. And um, it's just been a bit of fun, and I thought I'd bring in all the drawings so you could see some of this the This is work. like a very sneak preview, guys. Very privileged to be able to see into new projects. So I draw these on tracing paper and drafting film. And I get really. So you hand draw them with pencil, or look at that! How cool is that? Yeah. You can see through it. It's amazing. Insane. <laughs> and they're little things. Well, in, and here are some of the drawings from it. So that's a character called Mike. Is this one autobiographical? Or? No. no. My dad's name is Mike as well as my name. He wasn't very creative with the naming process. I think he just thought, oh, Mike will do. <laughs> and, um, and he thinks it's about him because he loves riding his bike. <laughs> but it's not actually, it just happens to be that Mike rhymes with bike. And so I've got lots of these characters. And have a look at this. These are all the drawings that I've been working on. And these are just the current ones. So I love Grandpa. You've got really strong colours. Are you like? How do you choose your palette? Oh, I I have restricted my colour palette to just a few different colours, but I've just I decided that um, my first two books were a little bit on the duller side, and that maybe on this one I would just experiment with doing a little bit more colour for that. But the backgrounds I can still keep them quite dull. I I like a bit of dull. I, I kind of enjoy it, but um, there's enough colour in there for people to go, oh, that's all right, that's cool. It's not completely depressing. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Fang again. He's come back into this, and I've called him Fang again in this <laughs> in this book. But, yeah, it's a, cool. it's a good, fun book. I like it. There's Mike losing the plot. Ah, that's He's what we'll do sometimes, I think. Yeah, and Grandad's coming up with an idea. Cool. And that remember that picture I showed you yeah. in the book? Yeah, so it all comes out in the There's a cogs. In your books. That's Grandad's brain. And notice how I've linked up the cogs with bike parts. And the little um, and a light. light globe. And an idea. And then his head explodes with lots of different <laughs> ideas and bike parts. And cool. I have drawn so many bike parts. I never want to ever draw a bike again. <laughs> ever. That's ever. It. Okay, no more bikes from Mike. No. I'd like to draw no a bikes. simple book next time about a polar bear in a snowstorm. So it's all just white and two eyes and a nose maybe. And it's yeah. wearing a white T-shirt, drinking a glass of milk. Yeah. Out of a white refrigerator. <laughs> and he meets another polar bear wearing exactly the same white t shirt. Oh dear. <laughs> they bump into each other because they can't actually see each other. <laughs> and that will be a very simple book that requires very little drawing. Which yeah. <laughs> well, that's something like Bryony yesterday was showing us her, you know, the range of her artwork from really fine art down to very um, simple, s strong lines. and. Yeah. yeah. It's it's fun. I mean, I love spending my time drawing. I just love it. And it's very hard sometimes when you get right at the end and you're thinking, you know what, I can barely finish this thing. And I've got two more drawings that I'm going to finish for now. And I'm going to push through and just get it done. And then I can open my brain up to doing something new. And I've already got some new ideas and fresh ideas 
that have been sitting around in here and in my books for a while. And when I finish those, then I can move on and start something else. And well, that's very disciplined. Yeah. I, yeah, I have to be. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. I need a plan. Here's some resources. For yeah, so we'll put um, a, a link for uh, the teaching resources that go with Mike's books on our website with the... Um, with also some of the drawings he's done that you guys can extend into your drawings and um, some of your ideas for logos and your initials and making things into different designs like he showed you. And um, oh, someone's done. done a drawing like that. So yeah. we'll, we'll put up some of, these, um, some of these pieces that Mike has available through his teaching resources. And um, That's cool. <laughs> I want to buy. I would like to buy that one for five dollars fifty. It's by Lara. Oh, Lara. This one, I better show you all of these ones. This is Evelyn's. That's really cool. It's got a bit of colour on there. And what and age were these guys? All, all different sorts, ages. They're my friend's um, daughters. And this oh. is Liv. Liv's the oldest, and so she's got a very detailed idea on how to design a useless object with absolutely no purpose at all. And yeah, we could have packaging. a lot of fun with this. Yeah, it's it's nuts. There's colouring in for kids who just like colouring in, which is fine. But there's also a big challenge on the last page. How to draw the orange 430. I bet you can't do it by Mr. Ripoff. <laughs> That's a challenge. Good luck. <laughs> I can do it because I've drawn that orange 430 um, so million a million times. times. <laughs> a million times. <laughs> a million times. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for coming in today to our Paperbird Books Home Club, Episode 4. And you guys can check this out on the YouTube channel. And tomorrow, guess who we've got? Who have we got? Who have we got? We've got Franny Lassac in her oh, home studio. because my favourite. She is in self-isolation, having taken in some of her family, who, young, her children... The adult children who had returned on a flight. So Brilliant. they're all in self-isolation. So we have the privilege of going into Frenet's amazing studio tomorrow, live at 10.30 tomorrow. She's funny. She's a lot she's of fun. She's worth looking at. She's, yeah. she's the funniest person I've ever... <laughs> I, I just find her hilarious. I just look at her and she makes me smile. She does. She's yeah. the best. Yeah. So everyone, we'll, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank